In a previous video, we talked about how to get your automata files onto your computer. Now that we have that, what we're going to do is actually learn how to take your cans that you created and put them in the automata system. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the folder that I saved all my stuff to. So the desktop is probably where we put it. And here's the automata simulation folder. And I'm going to pull up this first one. There's two in here. There's one here. This is just going to be an empty box, as you can see in the preview. If I go to the next one, it's going to be the one that has the ruler in it. When we do our displacement graph, this is the one we want to use. For right now, we just want to show you how to put a cam in there. So I'm going to pull this one up, the automata simulation, and hit open. When I do, you're going to see that there's an empty box there. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to place, and I'm going to find those cams that I've made earlier. Here's an eccentric cam I'm going to use. So I just place it in there, and I'm going to go to constraint. And I'm going to make the mid plane here, so the plane that runs in the middle of the, of the uh, cam. I'm going to click that. I'm going to mate it to the mid plane right here of the follower. So let's zoom out so you can kind of see where we're at here. We're actually on this one, the one going up and down vertically there. So we'll click on that, and you'll see that it is mates those two planes together. So I'll apply that. Next, I will mate the axis of the cam to the axis of the axle. So I can click apply there. So let's kind of rotate around and see what we've got so far. So far what we've done is we've made it the, the mid plane of the cam to the mid plane of the follower. And we've made it the axis of our cam to the axis of the axle. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna mate, we're gonna mate our mid plane of the cam to the big plane here of the axle. So then we click apply. So now if I, if I reach out of here, if I escape out and I just start spinning this around, you can see that the cam is moving around freely. That's a good thing, but you'll notice here that the follower, this piece, is not moving up and down. All right, so we're going to fix that right now. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put a transitional constraint in. So watch how this works. We'll go to constraint. We've used almost all of these now. We're actually going to go here to the kind of the middle. It says transitional. Very important that we follow these steps. We're going to click the edge of the cam, so right there around it. And then for selection two, I make sure to click the bottom of that cam, so the underside where the actual arc is, so right here. And then I click apply. So now when I go out here and I rotate this handle, you can see that that cam and that follower they move together. Now, we can also create what's called a driven constraint. So sometimes when you guys come in the room and you see one moving on the board and it's moving by itself, this is actually how it happens. So I'm going to go to constraint and I'm going to choose angle. So right here. And for solution, I'm going to make it a directed angle. So I'm going to click that in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this big plane right here. And next, I will click the other mid plane going through our follower. So it's this one here, this one going across. So I'm going to click side two or selection two and click that plane. Now you'll see that those two are bonded. And I can set the angle if I want. Right now, I'll just take zero and I'll apply it. So now you can see right down here, there's, there's that angle constraint. One thing I would recommend that you do is change the name of that thing. So click on it and change it to drive. That way, you know from now on, anytime you go here, this is how you're going to drive the constraint. So you're going to right click it now and you'll say drive. So right click where it says drive and go to drive. And then you can see here, it says start at zero degrees. Now, when you do your displacements, you're going to want to say end at 45. So you're going to go basically every 45 degrees. Now I hit the play button here, and you can see that it moved on its own. If I wanted to go another 45, I would just say, all right, here's 90. So I hit the play button again, and now you can see where it's going to go. Again, add another 45 and continue going. Now, another trick you could do, you could go ahead and make that 360 click your additional options arrow. Then you can come down here 
and you could say, I want to see it do that uh, 10 times. And then you could hit your play button. And it's going to continue. So basically, you just put a loop in. It's going to loop for 10 times and then stop. And then there's the rewind, you know, so you could make it go the opposite direction if you wanted to. I'll go ahead and reset that. All right, so let's take a look at what it looks like when we go to test it. So there we have, we're set up and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead now and I'll pull up the test one. So the automata simulation test. Now by default, they've already put a hexagon in here for us. So I'll just click on that and I'm going to delete it because I want to put my own cam in. So now I'm going to go to place and let's just use the same one. Here's the eccentric cam. And I hit OK. So I'll go to constraint and I'm going to make this mid plane again to the mid plane here of the follower. And then again, make the axis of the cam to the axis of the axle. Go ahead and click apply. I'll do, since I'm here already and made, I'll make the, the mid plane here to, excuse me, make the parallel plane here to this plane as well. Okay, so now what should be happening is I should be able to turn this. And we remember we didn't put any uh, relationship in here between the cam and the follower yet. We already do that now. So let's do that. So we'll go to constraint and we're going to do that transitional one. We'll click the edge of that, and then we got to be really careful, and we want to click the bottom of the follower, so right there. All right, so now when we back out of here, we should be able to take that, and everything moves as it's supposed to. All right, now remember, we're going to go ahead and create that driven constraint. just makes life a lot easier when we're doing the test. So to do that, I'm going to take the constraint. Remember, that's got to be a driven angle. So we'll make that angle to the horizontal there and then apply it. Now you can see here's our angle. So now we can right click and we can say drive. So I'm going to set it up to go from 0 to 45. I'm going to go ahead and use my look at tool over here and square up the ruler. So what we're really looking at now is where to measure from. So we need to start here. Our zero point, so this thing right now is considered zero. It's right in here. So that is, well, that's roughly three quarters, maybe a little bit over. So I'd say maybe, maybe 13 sixteenths probably would be a, a good, good guesstimate there. I'm going to hit play. So I'm starting at 13 sixteenths. Hit the play. And it actually drops some. So our displacement went from 13 sixteenths down to about 3 eighths of an inch. So I would subtract the difference. And that's going to be my displacement. So then I'm going to say, all right, so you start at 45 this time. And I want you to go to 90. I'll hit play again. So I knew the reading from last time. There's where we settled up. So I'll write that displacement value in. Then I'll go from start, which will be 90. And I'll add another 45, so that takes us to 135. I knew my zero line, so now I just write the displacement. So I'm going to continue going all the way until I get to the end of 360 degrees. And those numbers should, should be entered in Excel. From that data table, I'll be able to create my motion graph.